these are the things we need to know before we can really go in and measure the impact. Now we actually get to the impacts. There's really two types of impacts that we're looking for in sport development programs. First one is really laying the basis of some sort of behaviour change. So we want them to be safer, we want them to be healthier, we want them to um, stop fighting with each other, be more educated, there's some process of behaviour change. And then there's the broader um, cultural change of values and attitudes. So those are the things, again, program specific that we're looking to measure. So when measuring impacts, we need to be clear what behaviour changes or what value changes we're seeking. And that's again why world peace is fantastic, but it's a bit too hard to operationalise, which is what we as academics and researchers are trying to do. We're trying to break it down to measure it. The program needs to be designed in such a way that these impacts become the evidence, that they're, they're very clear that they're being achieved. They need to be measurable, and we need to know as researchers or as evaluators what tools to use to best measure them. How will we know when we get there? So if you've got these outcomes or these aims, how will we know to measure that you've actually achieved them? So if they have outcomes, it might be weighing people, measuring people, getting them to run on a treadmill. That's an easier one to measure. Um, do I feel more confident? <coughs> ask me today, ask me yesterday when I was looking after a two-year-old with gastro. wasn't feeling quite so confident then. So those ones are more fuzzy to measure. And things about gender equity, for example, are incredibly difficult to measure. It's not just about the number of girls that turn up. It's more complex than that. And our impacts, what are the impacts that we're looking for in these changing values and attitudes? Are we wanting them to find new peers? Do we want them to have a better understanding of others? Are we looking for them to understand the social rules? Understanding consequences for their actions? Efficacy, self-worth, responsibility, reduced risk-taking behaviours, ambition, increased education and job, job prospects, a variety of different things we could be trying to deliver. And again, some of these are easier to measure than others, but if we need to know what, we, what our impacts of our program are, then we can do, design the right tools to measure them to let you guys know where you got there. Outcomes. This again is where it gets very broad depending on the program. There are a variety of strategic outcomes. They should be linked to the program aims and objectives, but it's really important to note as practitioners and also as evaluators that very often our sport for development programs have unforeseen outcomes. Stuff happens by accident because we're looking at groups of people doing things. We, we, they have their own agency. So we can provide a structure, but sometimes things happen. Sometimes those things are fantastic, and they're the great ones to report on. Sometimes something goes completely horribly wrong that no one really saw. So we need to know what outcomes we're expecting, but we also need to be flexible enough in our measurement that we can allow space for the accidents, whether they're happy accidents or sad accidents. Again, these outcomes are completely dependent on the context of the program the nation that you're delivering the program in, the population that you're working with, the issue that you're trying to address, and the stakeholders. Who your funders are have a very clear and um, obvious shaping factor in what the outcomes will be, because the funders are funding you to achieve something. So ideally your outcomes should be helping the funders realise those goals. So I'm going to talk to you briefly about research and evidence. I know um, many of the organisations I work with feel like well, we don't really know what we're doing, we don't know where to find, how to find that the research that's been done for or the body of, of evidence. There really is a growing body of research literature on sport for development research. There is journal articles written about it. Um, a Google Scholar search I did last week had 1,210 plus hits of the bracketed term sport for development. So those actual three words as a term had over 1,200 hits. What I can say about that though is we, I didn't do a quality exercise, so I can't tell you that they were all fantastic peer reviewed blind studies, but there's, there is bodies of work out there. There is actually also, and this is a spruik because I'm one of the deputy editors, but in your um, show bag, the Journal of Sport for Development is a new journal which is designed to specifically bring together sport for development research. The key for the um, JSF that we've developed is it is an open access journal specifically so that practitioners can access research. Quite often when we as academics publish our research we make sure that it's published in journals that no one can get unless they also work at the university. So JSFD has been designed so that people can actually find our research and not just talking to each other. 
top, the common term seems to be moving towards sport for development, but that's still up for grabs at what it is actually that we're talking about. And as I said, we've seen um, thousands now of hits in this area, but again, we're seeing also increased specialisation. So there's a concept now of sport for development. There's also a more increasing concept of sport for development and peace, which is about interconflict resolution and those sorts of things. So where your, your program sits, whether it's health promotion, social inclusion, that may change the terminology around. But there is lots of work happening in this space as evaluation right through to academic research. Um, and it's a significant policy area for many governments internationally and the UN obviously. So it's obviously a growing area of research interest.